The modern Italian defense industry isn't really known for exceptional fighter aircraft or tanks. But that doesn't mean that the country doesn't have anything to set it apart from other European or international players. In fact, Italy is pretty good at making helicopters, in large part thanks to a company called Augusta. The story of this manufacturer started in 1907, when Count Giovanni Augusta founded the Augusta Aeronautics Company in Palermo. The Count was actively involved in the creation of the Italian aircraft industry. He designed the AG-1 biplane, contributed to the development of parachutes, and managed the logistics of transporting Caproni bombers to the battlefields of World War I. The Count's company was also involved in aircraft maintenance, but Augusta had bigger plans for the future of his business. In 1923, he built a factory to produce aircraft of his own design, but unfortunately that dream did not come to pass. Four years later, the Count died, leaving the company to his son, Domenico Augusta. Domenico was as fond of aircraft as his father, but decided to go all in on the business of maintaining aircraft developed by other manufacturers, leaving the development of new models for the Italian military to other companies. Right after World War II, airplane production was forbidden in Italy. But Augusta had other things to do. Where the state failed, the company survived and even branched out into new markets. Its motorcycle business was successful enough for the company to carve out a ditch for itself. And aeronautical engineers didn't have to wait too long to get back to work as well. The creation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the start of the Cold War motivated Italy to reorganize its air force. Once again, Augusta was unable to produce original designs, but the company succeeded in producing aircraft and helicopters under license. In the 1950s, Augusta engineers worked closely with Bell, Sikorsky, and other notable manufacturers while still designing their own prototypes. Working with Bell proved to be especially important for securing the company's future. Augusta managed to get the rights to produce the Bell 204, the civilian version of the iconic Iroquois, for both the local and international markets. Moreover, it was a full package deal, allowing the Italian company to both make and sell those helicopters. In 1966, Augusta also secured the rights to produce the Bell 205, called AB-205 on the Italian market. Compared to its predecessor, the new aircraft had an elongated fuselage, a bigger rotor, and a new engine. This multi-purpose utility helicopter became a smash hit. Combat operations, search and rescue, transport duty, it could do it all, and was in fact extensively used in all those capacities, both locally and abroad. In War Thunder, we have a combat-ready version of the AB-205, fitted with miniguns and rocket launchers. In the 1970s, Augusta finally had its first big breakthrough. The Italian Air Force decided to employ the A-109 Hirundo, a multi-purpose helicopter which also garnered interest from foreign clients. Even though it had some resemblance to the Huey, the Hirundo was in fact an all-Italian design. Due to the design of the rotor and the twin-engine arrangement of the vehicle, the helicopter was known for its good flying characteristics and excellent handling. Furthermore, it came with a comfortable cabin with a relatively low noise level, at least compared to popular models available on the market at the time. As we've said, Italy wasn't the only country interested in the Hirundo. The list of operators includes the UK, Angola, South Africa, and quite a few others. Among other things, the A109 was used as a VIP transport and a police patrol vehicle. But that wasn't enough for Augusta. After this success, the company dared to foray into considerably more challenging territory, at least for the 1980s. They decided to make an attack helicopter. At the time, there wasn't a single European aircraft of this type. The only countries that produced attack helicopters were the big players, the USSR and the US. It took the company more than 10 years to get the vehicle into production, but that time was definitely well spent. Augusta engineers managed to create a nearly perfect anti-tank helicopter. The A129 Mangusta was a light combat vehicle with a sturdy body that could survive several hits by 23mm AA guns. It was a highly agile design capable of operating at day or night in all weather conditions. 
Unsurprisingly, the Italian Air Force was more than happy to quickly accept the helicopter into service. At the turn of the century, the company underwent a series of transformations. Augusta had a long history of collaboration with the Westland helicopters. Among other things, the British manufacturer was actively involved in the development of the Mangusta. In the end, the leadership of both companies decided to join forces under a single banner. And that's how a united Augusta Westland was born. The A-129 arrived too late to be used in the Cold War and was never produced in large numbers. Just like the company, though, it managed to get a second chance at life, as the Turkish T-129 attack, which was basically based on the Mangusta. The Turkish variant was fitted with a new engine and Turkish development weapon systems, including the UMTAS ATGMs by Rocketson. Today, Augusta Westland is part of the Leonardo Multinational Company that integrates the activities of several large European defense contractors. It's still developing and manufacturing helicopters, and in Turkey, the attack is going to have a legacy of its own, as there are plans to make a new, wholly Turkish version of the vehicle. By the way, what's your opinion on Augusta helicopters? Tell us in the comments below. <laughs>